Hey fellow photographers, it's Alessandro Carpentiero and I want to welcome you to the Photography News Show, where every Monday I bring you the best and latest news in the photography industry. Coming up today for episode number 38, we have the Samyang 135mm f1.8, an innovative filter system and much more. So let's begin! Camera News Samyang, also known as Rokinon, is a South Korean lens manufacturer that became known for its cheap manual lenses. In the last few years, though, it has developed a wide range of autofocus lenses, especially for Sony, creating more competition in the market while giving Sony shooters a cheaper alternative for prime lenses. Talking about f1.8 lenses, Samyang's AF lineup includes the 24, 35, 45 and 75mm, and from this week there also is the Samyang AF 135mm f1.8 FE. It shares the background of the 135mm f2 manual lens launched back in 2015, but the optical construction is entirely new, comprising 13 elements in 11 groups, including 3 extra low dispersion lenses, 2 high refractive index lenses, and one ultra-precision aspherical lens, which will all contribute to reduce aberrations and increase sharpness. Talking of features, we have a focus hold button that can be customized for any other feature, including eye autofocus. Right below it, we have the custom switch that controls what the focus ring does, making it possible to change the aperture by rotating the focus ring, something useful when making videos while the second switch is a focus range limiter that facilitates operations while shooting at a static subject. When it comes to parted lenses around this focal length, you usually can't get too much up close to a subject, and you end up either losing shots or wasting time changing lenses. But this 135mm has a minimum focusing distance of just 69cm, or 2.26 feet, which will allow you to get a 0.24x magnification factor, increasing the usability of the lens in different scenarios. It weighs 2 pounds, is weather sealed against light rain, snow and dust, and it comes at $999, which is half of Sony's 135mm f1.8 lens. I mean, I don't want to give any judgement without testing both lenses side by side, but I find it very difficult to believe that Sony's lens is twice as good as the Samyang. So, if you are a portrait Sony shooter that doesn't necessarily need the GM quality, you could surely get great results for half the price by giving this lens a try. If you want to do so, you can find the link in the description. Oh, and if you are liking this content, then please consider subscribing to get this weekly show and always stay on top of the industry. It won't cost you anything and it really helps support my work. Thank you and let's get back to the news! Accessory news Last year, H&Y launched the Revo Ring, its only one filter system that includes a polarizer and a variable ND. The cool thing is that it fits any thread size, so that you can stop going crazy with all the step-up rings and you can control the ND effect and the polarization separately, by rotating the respective filter. On wide-angle lenses though, you would get the cross-polarization effect on high ND levels, but this is now fixed thanks to the magnetic ND filters, which you can just put on top of the system to block more light while avoiding the cross effect. I see this as a very useful kit for run and gun filmmaking, and as usual, you can find all the details in the description. Pictures of the week In this segment, I feature the most interesting pictures I've seen on the web. BBC has recently launched a documentary series called The Green Planet, which showcases the hidden world of plants from deserts, jungles, underwater, and much more. The plant world is a pretty slow one, but the film crew did an amazing job in creating very dynamic visuals. On BBC Earth's YouTube channel, you can find a behind-the-scenes video that explains how the moving time-lapse footage was captured, which is way more challenging than you might imagine. I thought I was a patient photographer waiting a couple of hours to shoot a sunset, but hear this. It took the team three days just to set up a shot and an entire month to shoot it. Kudos for the patience and the amazing results. That's it for today. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Photography News Show. 
Which news did you like the most? Just let me know in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a big thumb up, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell, and share this video with your photography friends. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.